Hi there, ladies and gents. Uh, what you're going to need today is definitely a calculator, a scientific calcula calculator. Now, if you can't find one, if you haven't got a proper one, firstly, get yourself one. But also, uh, you could go online just for now and go to, if you search up online scientific calculator, you will find one. Okay, It's not going to be as good as having one in your hand, though. I um, mean, your, your phone, if you turn it sideways, is usually a scientific calculator. Well, when it's on calculator, turn it sideways. But get yourselves an actual calculator if you haven't got one. You desperately need one. But anyway, uh, your starter really is to do this. So I want you to use your calculator to calculate these and round them to one DP, one decimal place, where necessary. Not all of them need it, but do for some, please. Okay, and I want you to, there's some little squared, to so get used to your square button. That might look like a little X with a little box on it and then you can put the power in or quite often there's an actual square button where it's an X with a 2 or something like that and the square root button which is of course exactly what it looks like there's a square root okay uh, so off you go pause do all of those please do write them down don't just do them in your head and unpause when you're done okay unpause then so 5 squared this is 5 times 5 it's not 5 times 2 it's 5 times 5 which is 25. 14 squared, 196. 8.4 squared, so 8.4 times 8.4. 70.56. Uh, but 1 dp, I said 1 dp. So 70.6. Yeah. Uh, 4.3 squared is 18.49, but I want one decimal place, so 18.5. 112 squared. Uh, that would be a hundred. Oh, blimey! Twelve thousand five hundred and forty-four. So that's one hundred and twelve times one hundred and twelve. Zero point four squared is zero point one six, but one decimal place. It's zero point two. Uh, thirteen point one squared. So thirteen point one times thirteen point one. One hundred and seventy-one point six one. So one seven one point six to one decimal place. 67, not 67, 6.7 squared uh, is 44.89. Now to one decimal place, 44.9. And uh, then I think we do to the square roots next. Oh, no, we do this. So we do 7 squared is 49, 12 squared is 144. Add those, 193. 121, square root of 121 is 11, because 11 times 11, 121. Square root of 130. Well, that'd be 11.4, so it's, uh, it's a one decimal place. Yeah. Uh, 0 0.04, uh, well, to do the square root of that, 0 0.2, isn't that weird? This number's tiny, this one's bigger, how, how does that work? 0 0.2 times itself is apparently an even smaller number, oh, weird. A 3.24, square root of that, 1.8. Coolio. Right, let's move on. Those kind of skills will be useful. Now, I've got a triangle here. Here's a triangle that has three sides and three angles. Is it a right angle triangle, though? And you go, well, it doesn't look like it. Well, it doesn't matter because it's not drawn to scale. That's the whole point of these. Uh, so we, we need a method for finding out if it's right angled without actually having it you know, written on it just from the lengths of the sides. And we can find out like this. Let's give it some length. So we've got three, sorry, six, eight, and 10 centimeters, those three sides. One long side and then two slightly shorter sides, or one middle side, if you like. What I'm gonna do is take the short side and I'm gonna square it. So I'm gonna do six times six. Don't ask me why, I'm just gonna do it. Right? So six times six is 36. And I'm gonna then take the next shortest side, which is eight, and square that, which is 64. Yeah? And I'm going to add them together. This is not random, by the way. This is, you know, there's a good reason behind this. I'm going to add those two together. And if I add 36 and 64, I get 100. So all I've done is taken those two short sides, square them both, add them together. Now, if let's take that long side, there's always one longer side. And I'm going to square that. So 10 squared is what? It is 100. And look, these are the same. Now this is a feature of right angle triangles, that if you take the two shorter sides and you square them and add them, it will be the same as taking the long side and squaring that. They will be equal, and if, if they are, 
then that means that it must be right angled. Okay, if they're not, then it is not a right angled triangle. I'm, I'm waving my arms emphatically here, which you can't see, but just take it from me, I am. Yeah, square the two short sides and add them. It should be the same as the long side squared. Here's another triangle. Question is, does it always work? Well, let's find out. Uh, 7, 5, and 8.6, OK? Now, this has been rounded a little bit. It was probably a tiny, tiny little bit longer than this, but it's been rounded to one decimal place, all right? So 1dp, that's been rounded too. That's fine. Uh, now, let's take the two short sides, because that's the long one, isn't it, that 8.6. Let's take the other two for now. Take the shortest one and square it. 5 squared, 25. Next shortest, 7. Let's square that, 49. Let's add them together. Again, it's not random. This is just just what I'm going to do, just square them and add them, right? 74. Let's take that 8.6, let's square that. So 8.6 times 8.6 is 73.96. Oh, well, that's not quite the same. But now there's a good reason for that. As I said, this has been rounded to one decimal place. It is, you know, it's a limit to how close you can get with a ruler when I measured that triangle. And so it's been rounded slightly, which is why this isn't quite precise. But I tell you what, it's pretty close. I think, you know, because this has been rounded, 74 is absolutely fine. This is definitely a right angle triangle. Yeah. Does it always work? Let's try another one. 3, 6, and 6.7, right? Again, it's been rounded a little bit, this one. So we're just looking for an answer that's going to be really close. That's the long side. So we'll leave that till last. Let's take the two short sides, square them, and add them. So shortest side is 3. 3 squared. 9. If you think, oh, I don't get this, I don't need you to get it. All I want you to do is remember this. Take the two short sides, square it. 3 squared is 9. 6 squared is 36. 6, 6 is the 36, right? And add them. Square them, add them. That's it, right? What do I get? 45. Okay, then take that longest side and do the same thing. Just square that. 6.7 squared is... 44.9. Is it close enough? Yeah, I think that's close enough, isn't it? You know, it, it's so close to, to 45 that it's going to be to be right. It's just being rounded a little bit here, which has affected our answer over there. Huh. But you might be. There's going to be some people out there that are thinking, hang on, does this just work for all triangles anyway? No, it doesn't. And I'm going to show you why. Now, this is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are the same. That side, that side, that side. All the same length, right? And in an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60. So it's definitely not a right angle triangle. Definitely not. But let's try doing the same thing and see if it works. Let's take the two short sides. Well, they're all the same, right? So, but anyway, let's just presume one of them is short. Let's say this one's longer. Uh, 6 squared is 36, that's one short side. Let's take the other one. 6, 36, 36. Okay, add them together. What do I get? 72. Let's take the long side, in inverted commas, the only other side, and square that. Well, clearly that's 36. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> this is not right angled. It is not a right angled triangle. No, it only works for right angled triangles. So, this is where you start writing some notes. What do we know? Here's a right angle triangle. Let's take the shortest side, let's call it A, and square it. Just square it, just take A, square it, right? And then take the other short side and square that. I'm going to call it B, so B squared. And I'm going to add them together. There we go. Now, it should be the same as the long side squared. So you take the two short sides and square them, add it together, it will be the same as the long side squared. Now some people do this with C, so they say A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But my problem with that is, well, what does this mean? I use H because it's the long side, because the long side on a right angle triangle is called the hypotenuse which is why I use H, because it helps identify it. Oh, goody, I've got a barking dog. I don't know why. We'll find out in a minute. I suspect it's because his mum's home. But we'll find out. Okay. 
So what have we got here? We got to, yeah, you square the two short sides, add them. It's the same as the long side squared. Hold on a sec, just got to shout the dog. Good boy. Who's a good boy? Do you like do you like doing this? Do you like right angled triangles? Yeah, good boy. Right. So here's a triangle, right? And I've I've highlighted the long side. Now if you're not sure which one's the long side, the right angle kind of tells you. Look, it points at the at the long side. There's always the longest side on a right angle triangle. It's called the hypotenuse. The right angle points at it. So if you're not sure, that's the one it is. Okay, let's, let's do our thing. Is this a right angle triangle? Let's take the two short sides first and square them. So three squared is nine, four squared is 16. And let's add it together, which is 25. Let's take the long side, which is five, and square that. 5 times 5, 25. So yes, it is right angled. This is a right angled triangle, okay? That's probably what the question was going to say. Is it right angled? Yes, it is. Um, because the two short sides squared and added is the same as the long side squared. Easy, right? Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right underneath all my working out there. All right, okay, your turn. Uh, should I rewrite this? No, you can see what that is, all right? Uh, your turn. Um, there's a triangle. Is it right angled? Just do what I did, please. You know, there's your formula that you're working to. Just check it out. Does it work? Pause the video. Ah, you have unpaused the video. Here we go. I am Mr. Nas's French cousin, and I love maths. Maybe. Okay, right, two short sides and one long side. That's the right angle. It's pointing at the long side, so the 13 is the long one. Let's take the two short sides and square them. So five squared and 12 squared. Five, five's a 25. 12, 12's a 144. Add them together. 169. And then if we want to check it's right angled, take that long side and square it. What do I get? 13 times 13, try it on your calculator. Wait, well, you've already done that, haven't you? 169, oh no, come back, I didn't write my answer. Yes it is, right? Because it's it's equal, you know? Now, I'm gonna give you a task now with, with four triangles and I want you to check out if they're right angled or not. Find the side that's longest and identify it. So in this one, it's that one. And then square the two short ones, add them together is it equal to the long side squared? Now remember, it might just be a tiny little bit out, you know, like 0.1 out or 0.15 out or something like that. If it's miles out, it's definitely not right angled, but if it's really close, it must be right angled, okay? Right, pause the video, unpause. When you're done, remember, square one short side, square the other short side, add them together, square the long side, is it right angled? You've got it. There's a little checklist up there. Off you go. Unpaused. Firstly, I'm going to identify the ones that are the longest sides on each triangle. That one is the longest there. 10.8 uh, is the longest there. Uh, 9 is the longest of those. And 7.5 is the longest of those. Now let's do some cues. Square the two short sides, so 6 squared equals 36, 8 squared equals 64. Add them together, and I get 100. Take the long side and square it, equals 100. So yes, this one is right angled. Over here, B, take the two short sides and square them. So 6 squared is 36, 9 squared. 81, add them together, and that would be uh, 3 plus 8 is 11, 117, okay? Then take that long side, 10.8, and square that. So 10.8 times 10.8, that's why I am reaching to my calculator, and it is 116.64. That's really close. It's really close, it's just a slight rounding error from the length of that side. So yes. It is right angled. Down here, 
4 squared, 16. 7 squared, 49. Make sure you are using the two shorter sides. Uh, that is 65. <laughs> There's someone at the front door. Uh, 55, 65. Okay, now take that short side, uh, sorry, the longest side and square that, which is 81. These two are nowhere near the same. This is definitely not a right angle triangle. This one was, and this one was as well, but it's not drawn scale. Okay, D, two short sides, let's square them. 4.5 squared is 20.25. The other short side is the 6. Let's square that to get 36. Add them together. That's 56.25. Right, take that long side. 7.5 and square it. What do we get? 56.25. Would you add them and eave it? Yep, they're exactly the same. I thought that was a surefire to be not a right angle triangle, but it is a right angle triangle, and the right angle would be down there. Cool, good. I hope you did all right with that, because you got four more. Have fun. All right, uh, don't forget, there's your little thing to remind you. Square one short side, square the other short side, add them together. Square the long side. Is it right angled? You try it. All right, pause the video. Off we go. Uh, we have unporized again, and I am that French cousin once again. Okay, let's highlight the long sides. We've got 8.05, uh, 9 is the long one there, 7.07 .07 is the longest one on that one, and 10 is the one that's longest down there. Okay, right, so let's do 4 squared equals 16, and i tell you what, actually, I'm going to do these ones slightly differently. Let's start getting into the habit of, um, you know, being a bit clever here and saving a little bit of time. Because uh, I want to square 4 and I want to square 7 and then I want to add them together. So I'm just going to do that in one calculation, which is 65. And then let's take that long side, 8.05, and square that and see where that gets us. Which is, ooh. 64.8025, that's so close that we can definitely say that yes, that is a right angle triangle. Good, and that would be the right angle. F, seven squared plus eight squared. Let's see what that gets us. You know, get into the habit of doing it like that. 113, and let's square the long side. Well, I already know that nine squared is 81. This is definitely not a right angle triangle. Those two things are nowhere near the same. Down here, so five squared plus five squared equals 50. Okay. And because it's 25 plus 25. And let's then take these two, so 7.07, .07, and let's square those. Well, that one, and we get, oh, very close, 49 point. Nine, eight, four, nine. That is so, 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 so close. That is also definitely a right angle triangle. And six, eight, ten. We've already done this one before. Six squared plus eight squared is a hundred. And ten squared is also a hundred. So yes, it's crept in there. A little sneaky question that we've already done. Okay. Right. Shifty on. So firstly. Couple of questions. Who discovered this maths fact, this amazing maths fact? Well, I think actually the uh, ancient um, uh, Chinese did and uh, Indian mathematicians years ago did as well. But <laughs> the person that gets credited with this, even though they both did this miles before he did, uh, is this chap here. Isn't he a handsome chap? Lovely beard. Uh, his name is Pythagoras and he lived from 570 BC to 495. BC. Uh, yeah, him. So his name goes on it, even though, as far as I know, there's no shred of evidence he had anything to do with it, and uh, other people discovered it before him. But, you know, why let fact get in the way? Uh, so this is Pythagoras's theorem, this one, that if you take the two short sides of a right angle triangle, square them and add them, 
it's the same as the square of the long side. Right. Let's put that whole thing back in there. How could we use this new maths fact? That's what you're thinking. Well, we can actually use it because if we already know that the triangle's right angled, we can actually use the fact that these two squared and added will be the same as this one squared to find the missing side. And we can do it like this. Let's take that short side and square it, and the other short side and square that, and add them together, right? So we're going to do 9 squared plus 11 squared. So that's 9 squared plus 11 squared, and I'm doing it on my calculator, nothing wrong with that, which is 202. Now, let's call this side x, this long side. No, I know it's the long side because the right angle is pointing at it. If I take that side and square it, it will be equal to 202. So all I need to do is go from it being x squared to being x, and to do that, I need to square root both sides. Effectively, I just square root to get my answer. Square root of 202 is probably a nasty, horrible number. Press SD to get my number. It's 14.2126, etc., etc. So to one decimal place, 14.2 centimeters. That's how long this side is, 14.2 centimeters. Okay, so we're just kind of adapting what we've done. You know, square the two short sides, add them, and then just square root it. Oh, calculate the long side. Why do I always do this where I write all the way through my uh, stuff there? Let's, let's, get, let's move that. That's just a bit silly on my part, isn't it? So calculate the long side of this right angle triangle. Well, I already did that, and I did it by doing taking the two short sides and squaring them and adding them. And I knew that that is the same as the long side squared, so I then square rooted. Your turn. Same thing, here's a right angle triangle. That's the longest side. Just do what you need to do. Square, square, add, square root, go. Oh, and pause the video. Cool, let's go. So, square the two short sides, three squared and five squared and add them together, which I believe is uh, 34, but I'm just going to double check that. It is 34. So that is the same as the long side squared. So if I want to find out what that uh, long side is, I just square root it. Square root of 34 is... Square root button, 34. In you go. That's it, just literally type it in. Get your calculator to do the work. We're all being lazy. Calculate is the one that's working. To one decimal place, that would be 5.8 centimetres. Well done to those that got that. Good. Two more then. I need to find the long side on each of these, the hypotenuse. Put your working out down. You might want to also draw a couple of these out as examples. I think that's a great idea. Why not do that as well? Pause the video, unpause when you've done all that and answer them. Okay, cool. Cool, yeah, great. Yeah, amazing. So let's take the two short sides and square them. So 7 squared and 5 squared and add them together to get 74. 74, 74, zoo lane. So that's the same as x squared is 74. I don't want x squared though, I just want x. So I square root everything. Square root 74. Which is eight point six zero oh, two three two. In fact, it's one of the questions we did right near the start. Now to one decimal place, eight point six centimeters. Right, square, square, add them, square root. Same here. Two short sides are eight and fourteen, so square them both and add them. Get your calculator to do it. Yeah, eight squared plus fourteen squared. Why should I work? Get the calculator to do it. 260, that's the same as the long side squared. I mean, clearly 260 is going to be way too long for this. So I've definitely missed something if I, have, if I give that as an answer. Then square root it. Because I don't want that side squared. I want the actual side. 
to route 65. Yeah, this is great. We'll ignore the thirds for now and just put decimal answer 16.1245, etc, etc, etc. One decimal place, 16.1 centimeters is how long this side is here. 16.1, yes? Always check, is it the longest side? Yes, it is. Is this one the longest side? Yes, it is. Happy days! Right, if you're not sure on that, you really need to go back and watch and listen again. Or obviously ask me for help, unless I'm not your teacher, and then don't ask me, because that would be a waste of time. Um, Pythagoras, finding the hypotenuse is your task in Dr. Frost. If you get questions wrong, I want you to go back and redo them, please, until you have 100%. Okay? Right. Farewell. Bye-bye.